I was born in Cambodia and as a teenager went to study in France. I became a business consultant and lived in Europe for several years. I came to Japan in 2006 to work in the country for five, six years. From the world's point of view, Japan is a source of innovation. The world expects Japan to continue to be quite innovative and advanced in terms of technology. Japan has been known as a technology pioneer. I wanted to see the assets that the country and the company still could further leverage among a wide range of technologies. I'm going to look at some of them and try to understand more. Japan has been a pioneer in robotics. The country has invested heavily in the latest technologies. Robots are used not only for manufacturing, but also increasingly for services to households and the elderly. In this center, they have developed humanoid robots. I'm very much interested to see more of that. Nishiwaki-san, hello. Hello, great to see you. Thank you very much for welcoming me <laughs> on this. So today I would like to show you at this institute, they are developing one of the latest humanoid robots. The robot works on two legs. It can move around by itself to anywhere a human can go. For example, it can carry heavy luggage, and this is something potentially useful in everyday life. The biggest advantage is that it can judge the surface of the ground so all we have to do is to point out which route to take. This robot is not pre-programmed at all on the nature of the ground, including whether there are steps on the way or not. What is uh, special about this robot? What kind of technologies is uh, really distinctive used in this robot? Mm -hmm. So the working control technology to the unknown uh, environment, that means the environment that includes unknown roughness, is uh, well top level. Especially the combination of perception, planning, and working control to go through the and no environment is uh, uh, our highest technology in the world. The robot assesses the nature of the unknown environment through a laser range sensor. It uses laser to measure and judge the surroundings. What kind of uh, applications Applicate. can we foresee mm -hmm. so, for robotics in the future? Mm -hmm. In future, so robot will work uh, where human works and lives. So robot will be inside the human working area, okay. and uh, it will help uh, from the very easy thing, uh, carrying something to other position or serving kind of things or such kind of things. Next, I visited Tohoku University in the city of Sendai. They are working on a disaster rescue robot. Good morning, Professor Tadekoro. Good morning, nice to see you. How are Welcome you? Welcome to Tohoku University. Thank you very much. So, this is the robot, right? This is a, yes, this is a response robot for the natural disaster. The strongest point of this robot is its mobility. It has five wheels with caterpillars. The four wheels on either side work like arms and legs to go over complex terrain or debris and it can climb slopes up to 70 degrees of inclination. We used uh, this robot in Fukushima Daiichi because the step is really uh, steep, uh, the angle is 45 degrees, and no other robot could go up to the second floor. So we must have uh, used this robot in these situations. Very interesting. Yes. 
One of the major roles expected of this robot is to examine situations inside collapsed buildings. This robot also uses the laser range sensor utilized in the humanoid robot that we saw before. The sensor allows the robot to grasp the environment in three dimensions. This is the company that produces the laser range sensors, which are so important for robots to assess the environment and space around them. The company's worst force is about 200, and its main products used to be sensors used in elevators. Then they responded to requests from robotics scientists and succeeded in developing small high-quality sensors. この、この大きさですね。このこの大きさで、えっと、精度が10ミリ以下のあの、距離精度が取れる、え、センサーをですね、実現できたというのが一番大きい。えっと、今まではこれの大きさで、あの、31倍ぐらいの体積のあるものが
it processes sewage of about 300,000 people per day. And how clean is the water now at this stage? えー、これぐらいの深さしか見通せないんですけども、この水ですと、え、1メートル以上ですね。え、下まで見通すことができます。そして入ってきた水に比べて数十倍綺麗になっています。え、魚が十分住める量になります。わお。Here they don't just treat sewage. They have an amazing facility that can process sewage into domestic water. ここがメインとなる施設です。このシステムで、え、飲み水に近い水再生水を作ることができます。え、このシステム、それぞれの中に入っている、え、ろ過膜がこのセラミックでできた、うん、ろ過装置でございます。There are 0.1 micrometer holes inside to capture microscopic dirt. これを作るのは日本古来の技術であります瀬戸物、焼き物、食器を作る技術を用いた冷水です。これが先ほど下水を処理した水です。第二沈殿地で。I checked the smell of filtered water process in this recycling plant and also the water process by generic method. There was a slight smell left in the water process by generic methods. But the filtered water had no noticeable smell. I couldn't tell the difference with a sample of ordinary tap water. It looks the same. I understood there are many visitors from foreign countries uh, in this place. How do they react to all this? はい、え、中東やアジアなどの水不足に悩む国の方々がこの技術をご覧になって熱心にご覧になっています。再生水がそういった飲み水に活用できないか、そういった視点視点からご覧になっているようです。え、下水から再生水を作る技術としては、日本
あ大きな揺れが我々のところに来る前に、うん、今地震が起きてもうすぐ大きな揺れが来ますよというようなことをあの知らせる技術緊急地震速報という技術があるんですけども少しでも早く避難を開始することができれば、まあ、あの地震による、まあ、被害が少しでも少なくなる、まあ、そういうようなことに活用されてますしあるいはこう例えばあの工場であの地震の揺れでこう被害が出るような工場で、まあ、あの自動的にこう機械を止めたり、まあ、そういうことにも活用されてます。うん Solar energy is very important for Japan. There are already large scale solar power plants, but they use silicon solar cells. The problem is that it costs much more than the other means of power generation in use today. I decided to visit an institution that is developing a new type of solar cells. Here they are experimenting with using pigment. Or dye instead of silicon. The dye helps the cell to absorb the sun ray. This is a solar panel using dye sensitized cells. It has the potential to significantly reduce the cost of solar cells. Nice to meet you. Good morning, yeah. Professor Han. How are you? What, what are the advantages of this technology? This uh, the solar cell advantage is the one is a low cost because we don't need high temperature and uh, vacuum process. Yes. And the next is the material is cheap. They are exploring how to mass produce solar cells using dye. The key to success lies with a middle sized company of a workforce of about 300. That handles rare metal. The dye that has shown the highest light to electricity conversion rate is a rare metal called ruthenium. This company has about 50% market share in the global ruthenium market, all produced through recycling. It has the most sophisticated recycling process in the world. 3年後にはですねあのパネルメーカーさんの方で、えー、量産化も始まりますそれに合わせてキロ単位の、えー、大きな量ができるような設備の方の導入を検討しております If they succeed in mass production, more solar cells can be produced at cheaper cost than the silicon solar cell panels that are produced today Airplanes, ships, railways and cars There are high expectations from fuel cell as a technology for clean energy for transportation. But the challenge is how to store hydrogen used as a fuel effectively. Hydrogen storage technology is very important for fuel cell application, for example, for fuel cell vehicle. I came to Tokyo University to see what kind of state of the art technologies they have developed here. We can、uh, store a high density of hydrogen in this sample very safely and also、okay. compactly.、Mm. Uh, that's why we can use this、uh, sample for vehicle, fair cell vehicle application.、Uh, this is、uh, portable batteries, and this is a hydrogen cylinder, and this is fair cell, and this is plug. And at least we are using a heavy hydrogen gas cylinder. So we'd like to replace this heavy cylinder by this、uh, powder. Two liters of hydrogen are stored within this tiny amount of powder. Usually, it takes a can of this size to store the same amount. For a car to run 500 kilometers, we need 30,000 cans of this hydrogen. But if you store hydrogen in the form of this powder, it takes only 30 cans. We'd like to use this kind of、uh, powders within 10 years. In the future, I'd like to use、uh, these materials、uh, in daily life. Okay. Just like batteries, I mean dry cell. Fascinating. Yes, thank you. I think in the next five to ten years, we'll provide 
not only Japan, but the world with new technologies that would enable us to have much more ability to use solar energy in a much more cost-effective manner with higher conversion rate of solar power into energy via all those new technologies. I was quite impressed by how much commitment I have seen from Japanese institutes and companies to develop innovative technologies. For example, it was fascinating to see how much investment has been made around robotics. Japan still has a lot of opportunities to further leverage its technological assets. These represent great opportunities for foreign companies to collaborate and help accelerate and adapt the launch of new products that would meet the world's expectations. This could be done in numerous ways. R&D collaboration, marketing or manufacturing collaboration.